All right, had a lady drop this right here golf cart off. This is an easy go DCS. So you have key switch up there, F and R switch there. But you have the micro switches. So it's a DCS. You might as well make a video tutorial to show you guys how to work on the easy go DCS. And what I mean by that, let's go over wire colors, let's go over schematics. Uh, let's do a pin out on this right here as well, okay? Number one, when doing this, be sure to jack the rear end up. I have it jacked up. I don't have it on jack stand, so my weight is rocking this right here, cart back and forth. However, once we put it in drive and run, the wheels are spinning. Definitely do not want to do that when it's on the ground accidentally run through your garage door, run into the shop or wherever your cart may be at. Now, I'm not too fluent when it comes to the DCS. These weren't made for very long. However, I went ahead and printed out a schematics here so we can run through everything and I can tell you the colors, codes and everything. With that being said, I'll place this right here, schematics on the screen and you can take a screenshot of it and you can diagnose your cart with it that way as well. I have El Cheapo. This is not a fluke. As long as you have DC, which is at 60 on mine, which is fine. And you have continuity to check the continuity. That's the only thing you need to test this right here cart. All right, we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is check battery voltage. Went ahead and put a lithium battery in this cart last year for this customer and they supplied the battery. So I went ahead and got my, my setup on DC 60. I got my negative lead going down here to the negative. And we're gonna touch the positive here and we're sitting at 40 volts. So we're good on battery voltage. Let's go ahead and check the one side of the solenoid, 40 volts. Check the other side of the solenoid, 40 volts. Go ahead and check the battery positive going into the controller. 40 volts. So we know that the controller is getting 40 volts through the heavy gauge terminals. All right, went ahead and put the negative lead here on the main negative of the controller. I'm gonna touch the controller since we know we're getting 40 volts there. Are we getting 40 volts there? So this lets us know that the battery is going through the shunt and moat. If you have lead acids, you probably won't have a shunt, but this right here goes with the gauge that came with the battery but it's going negative here, going directly into the controller, so there's no breaks there. This white connector here is a 10 pin connector. There's only gonna be nine wires on there. One is on the right hand side, which is white. 10 is on the left hand side, which is red and yellow. We're gonna jump around a little bit on here because of the way the test is going. And I'm gonna try to test it in order. So number one is white. This is the ITS output. That means the output of the ITS is sending a voltage signal back to the controller. Okay, so I'm not gonna test white just yet. I'm gonna test number two first because that's the ITS input, okay? That means that this right here controller is sending power out of the black wire. So it's the output number two on the white pin here to the input of the ITS. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I got everything set up, multimeter and everything. I'm gonna put the, uh, my red terminal here on the black wire of this right here signal. And once we check the voltage, we should have around 14 volts and we do. So it lets us know the black wire here, number pin two on the DCS controller is good. If this one wasn't putting out 14 volts, the controller would be bad and you need to replace it. Now we're gonna test number one, which is white. Okay, there's nothing on here. The ITS is your inductive throttle sensor. So what does that mean? Well, once you press the throttle, it's gonna send a power signal going to this right here white wire back to the controller to tell it how fast to spin the motor. So I'm gonna try to put it in here. I'm gonna try to press this. And you see it's going up. And it'll go up to about 1.5, 1.6 volts. And it did. So this lets us know the ITS in the golf cart is working. Pin number three, it's gonna be green and black. 
This is gonna be a reverse alarm. Now this is gonna actually send a ground signal to the alarm buzzer. With that being said, you're gonna to have to move your ground from the ground to the positive. Now once we place our terminal, our positive terminal down here on the green and black, see it shows negative 39.87. The reason it's negative is because I have my terminals backwards here, okay? If I put the black one on the terminal and I put the red one on positive, it would show us a positive 39.87. So it lets us know that the reverse buzzer is working now. Like I said, the reverse buzzer is removed from this golf cart. Pin four is orange, the orange wire right here. This is gonna be your reverse, okay? We're at 40 volts right now, but we're also in reverse. So if we change this right here to neutral or forward, it's gonna drop voltage. So let's just know that this micro switch down here on reverse is working as well. Pin five, which is this green wire here. This is gonna be the pedal switch return. Right now we're sitting at zero. I'm gonna hit the pedal switch. We got voltage off, pedal switch hit again. So the pedal switch is working in the floorboard as well. Pin six is the yellow wire there. This is the key switch. Right now we're at 39.93 volts. The key switch is on, turn the key off. Turn the key back on. So it lets us know that the key switch is working as well. All right, pin seven is the blue wire. This is the solenoid coil wire. Now this is a little tricky, so just listen to me. Right now I have it on the negative. My, my negative's going to negative. My positive probe's going down to the blue wire. We're showing 39.92 volts, but as soon as we press the accelerator pedal, the voltage drops out. Why does it drop out for? Well, it actually changes from a positive to a negative. On the positive terminal, like so, it's not reading anything now, but as soon as we hit the accelerator pedal, it's sending a negative signal, so it's 40 volts. So it lets us know that our blue wire, pin number seven, is working. Pin number eight is blank. Pin number nine is our red wire. This is our logic power wire. This is actually the wire that goes to the reed switch. Now, when we converted this right here golf cart, we bypassed the reed switch and connected it directly to the positive here. So this right here wire will show 39.98 volts. If yours is not showing positive and you do not have a lithium battery, say you have some lead acid batteries, on the stock charging receptacle, you will have a, your two main lugs going to positive and negative. You have a little red wire coming off of that, and there's a reed switch built into it. It's like a safety switch, so when the charger is plugged up, it, the golf cart won't run. But over time, those reed switches will fail, and if it does not have power, the controller's not seeing power back there again, the golf cart won't run. So you can usually just bypass that by running that red wire directly to the positive here on the battery and that works. And number 10 is gonna be our tow run switch. Right now we're at 40 volts. I'm gonna press the tow run switch here and voltage is dropping. Turn it back on, voltage is going back up. So that is a pin out of this white plug. We've done tested the positive and negative cable the next thing we can test is this right here cable here, which is the motor uh, negative cable. And this one right here will plug the negative up to it, like so. And as we press the throttle, this right here will go up and down. You see there, as we press the throttle, it goes up to pack voltage. Now it doesn't matter if red's and white or red's and black and black and black and black and white, it does not matter. Uh, we're just testing this right here, see if we have continuity and we do. If you put those in there and your continuity tester did not ring the alarm there, then it lets us know that this circuit is open and there's a break in the wire in there. 
Another thing you can do too is to take the other lead after you have it plugged up to one and see if it's grounding out. You can ground it out here. You can ground it out on the frame itself or you can ground it out to the motor back here as well, okay? We don't have any beeps, so it lets us know that the uh, field is not shorting out in there as well.